Just a few more weeks left in 2020. The year is coming to a close. And as the year comes to a close, you start seeing more and more people, authors writing their top five or top 10 best Linux distributions of the year and video content creators giving their top five Linux distributions of 2020. And I thought I would contribute a little bit to that discussion as well. I'm going to give you guys my personal top five Linux distributions of 2020. Now, we need to talk about how I'm going to come up with my top five Linux distributions. These are going to be distributions that were released in 2020 and that I took a look at. So you saw these distributions sometime on my Linux YouTube channel. And these are going to be my personal favorite that I took a look at as far as distributions that impressed me that I would run on my personal equipment. This is not going to be what everybody else does for a top five Linux distribution list because their typical top five list are, you know, these are the best distributions for the new user. These are the best distributions to gain mass adoption, things like that. No, no, no. I'm not even considering that. I'm going to tell you these are my personal favorite top five Linux distributions of 2020. This is just my opinion. I'm not trying to come at it from any kind of weird angles. These are just the ones that I enjoyed the most. So looking back at all of the Linux distributions that I featured on the channel during 2020, I covered oh, probably about 15 or 20 of these distributions on camera. And the ones that will not make the top five list, but I did take a look at during 2020, were Calculate Linux, Endeavor OS, Maybox, the various flavors of, of Ubuntu 2004 and 2010, Linux Mint 20, Fedora 32, DevOne, Instant OS, Archcraft. I even covered a couple of non-Linux operating systems. I did a video on FreeBSD. I did a video about uh, React OS, but none of those are going to make the top five, although all of them were fantastic operating systems. Really, a lot of people, when they do top five lists, they oftentimes give you a bonus, you know, the top six, really, because they give you that one thing that just missed the top five. And I'm, I'm going to do that too. Just barely not making my top five. I wanted to find a spot for it, but I just couldn't. It couldn't crack the top five. But eLive. Fantastic distribution based on Debian, uses the Enlightenment desktop, and it's just blazing fast. And it just looks cool. It's got that old school retro kind of look. It looks like Linux did back 15 years ago when Linux was still kind of a niche operating system, not quite as mainstream as it is today. And it's just really cool stuff. I mean, the, the Enlightenment desktop is really nice. I mean, it uses, you know, like 200 megs of RAM or some, something crazy. And this just barely didn't make my top five. I wanted to find a spot for it, but it just misses out. So that's your bonus pick. Now let's get into the actual top five. And coming in at number five is GNU Geeks. Now, Geeks is just a really interesting GNU slash Linux distribution. It is one of the free distributions, 100% free as in freedom. It uses the Linux Libre kernel. And because of that, I really couldn't place it higher than number five on the list because as fascinating as GNU Geeks is, and I played with it on one of my laptops for a couple of months, kept a VM of it around for a couple of months. And, you know, finally, what made me kind of have to move off from Geeks is because it's one of these 100% free as in freedom distributions and uses the Linux Libre kernel and has absolutely no proprietary blobs or anything. You're very limited on the hardware that you can actually install GNU Geeks to. For example, I had it on a laptop, a physical laptop that I ran for a couple months. I never had Wi-Fi working because I was going to have to change the Wi-Fi chip in that laptop you know, if I was ever going to have Wi-Fi working with Geeks. I tried to install Geeks on my main production machine, and the installer wouldn't even work on my main production machine. So you know, it's a very specialized kind of distribution, but very fascinating because it's one of these distributions where you write a config file during the installation process. The config file is written in GNU scheme. No, it's in GNU GAL, which is a dialect of scheme, which is a dialect of Lisp. Anyway, you write your config file and then it pulls down all your packages and stores them in a really unique way, and they call it the Geeks Store. It's uh, it's very much like Nix OS, except, you know, Geeks has come at it from a, a different kind of <laughs> a slant because it's 100% free, where Nix is not 100% free. Also, GNU Geeks used the GNU Shepherd init system, where Nix, of course, uses System D. But 
overall, I thought GNU Geeks was just a really cool distribution. I wish I could have made it work on my main production machine. I would have loved to have ran this thing. Unfortunately, I just the hardware I have is just not compatible with it. But the little bit of time that I did play with it on some of my test laptops and in VMs, I thought it definitely deserved coverage on the YouTube channel. I did two videos about Geeks. Uh, one of them, uh, the very first one was GNU Geeks is an advanced GNU operating system for freedom lovers. Check that out if you haven't. Anyway, it was a really cool operating system. I think I installed it with a XFCE on that video, so we did a desktop environment. I also played around a little bit with some window managers with GNU Geeks on camera. I would show you guys GNU Geeks in a VM, but I lost the VM that I had of GNU Geeks because I've distro hopped since then and I didn't back up that VM. Now let's go to number four on DT's personal top five Linux distributions of 2020. And this is going to be the only one that is probably a little shocking to people because it is an Ubuntu based distribution and it actually has a desktop environment. You guys know DT doesn't use desktop environments, but I really like this distribution. Linux Lite. It's one of those I've always kind of played with. I've kept many versions of Linux Lite over the years on USB sticks. I have installed Linux Lite many times on friends and family computers. You know, they bring me their old Windows 7 laptops that's riddled with viruses and they want something new. And Linux Lite is great because it has this very light, fast XFCE desktop environment. And it's very reminiscent of Windows. You know, the Windows workflow, the Windows paradigm, as far as it's got a panel at the bottom. The XFCE menu kind of looks kind of like a traditional kind of Windows panel. And it's very easy for people that have never run Linux before. And even though I don't know if I would personally run it on my own equipment, it is one of those distributions that every time they have a new release, I always go grab that ISO and I keep it on a USB stick. And if you guys haven't ever checked out Linux Lite, I strongly urge you to check it out, especially if you are an XFCE lover, because they do a really nice XFCE desktop environment. Now, moving on to number three in my top five distributions of 2020, receiving the bronze medal. Antix 19.3. What a fantastic distribution. I've always loved Antics. It's another Debian-based distribution based on Debian Stable, and it's designed for older hardware. They even still have 32-bit images. It's one of the rare Linux distributions that still has 32-bit images. So if you've got something really ancient, so if you've got some machines that are 15, even 20 years old, you know, most of your Linux distributions are not going to be able to be installed to those machines. But chances are... You'll get Antics running. This is Antics with the ICE WM window manager, the ICE window manager. That's uh, the default one that it logs into. Also on the ISO, or actually already installed, you can quickly switch to other desktop environments and window managers. If I go to desktop here, other desktops. Other than ICE WM, we have a Fluxbox that we can log into. But just by clicking that, and now I'm in Fluxbox here. And let's see, if I go to the desktop category in Fluxbox, we could also change over to JWM, which is fantastic. JWM is a, one of the lightest window managers you will ever run. I've gotten JWM, you know, down to using like 100 megs of RAM before. Like, it's one of the craziest window managers as far as system resource usage. JWM is very much a clone of Openbox. In fact, matter of fact, the right-click menu, you can uh, pipe dynamic menus through it and everything just like you can in Openbox. It's really a fascinating window manager. So, top three of 2020 Antics, 19.3. And our silver medalist coming in at number two is NixOS. And this is a VM of NixOS running the Qtile window manager, but I actually have NixOS running on that laptop behind me. I've been running NixOS now for, I don't know, three, four weeks on that laptop. And that's uh, NixOS. I installed Qtile and Xmonad both on that laptop. So I've got two different window managers. Wi-Fi works and everything works. And the reason that NixOS is number two on my list and GNU Geeks is number five, even though they're very similar, is because NixOS uses the standard Linux kernel, right? <laughs> and which means I can install it on pretty much anything, right? The, all Linux distributions all use basically the same kernel. You know, the kernel is what takes care of all your hardware support and the drivers and everything. So that's why there's really not much difference as far as uh, hardware support between the various Linux distributions. But that's not the case with a 
Linux distribution that doesn't use the standard Linux kernel, such as GNU Geeks, that you, they use the Linux Libre kernel, and it's very limited on hardware support. So unfortunately, as much as I would have loved to have had GNU Geeks up higher in the list, Geeks is at five, Nix OS is all the way up at number two, and I did a video about Nix OS, and you know, this is just a fascinating distribution because kind of like Geeks, you know, during the installation process, the installation process is really you write a config file. This config file tells Nix how to install everything, what to install, how to configure everything, how to set up the system. Everything is done with this one config file. And then if you want to, you can save that config file, push it to your GitHub or your GitLab. That way you've always got it. It's kind of like having a dot file but a dot file that actually configures your entire operating system for you. It's fascinating, really. A matter of fact, I think that's what I titled the video I did about NixOS. Yeah, NixOS is a fascinating Linux distribution, and I agree. I also said it's a truly unique distribution, and which it absolutely is. It and GNU Geeks are very similar. Geeks is kind of patterned after NixOS. NixOS is a little older than GNU Geeks, and uh, basically Geeks is... A clone of NixOS from the GNU guys where they wanted to use a, a bit more of the GNU utilities and, you know, they wanted a fully 100% GNU kind of operating system. You can even, with GNU Geeks, use the herd kernel, the GNU herd kernel, if you want to, if you want even less hardware support. But NixOS is definitely deserving of being a number two on my top five Linux distributions of 2020. And the number one distribution of 2020 according to dt is there any doubt any of you guys that have been following the channel probably can guess what my number one linux distribution of 2020 is going to be it's probably the one that would have been my favorite distribution of 2019 as well because i've been running this for a while and that is arco linux Arco Linux is just fantastic. Now, this is Arco Linux with um, Xmonad. I logged in to Xmonad to do this video, but I have several different window managers installed. Arco Linux comes in a wide variety of flavors. They have something like 20 some odd different ISOs. You can get Arco Linux with fully configured i3, BSPWM, uh, Erbstluft, I think, Awesome, Xmonad, Qtile, they were the first distribution I've ever heard of <laughs> that was doing a Qtile version. And that's really what got me interested in Arco a couple of years ago is because they actually released a Qtile version and an Xmonad version. And nobody had ever done that. I know for sure nobody had ever done a Qtile version of a Linux distribution because Qtile was kind of unheard of at the time. And they keep doing new releases and adding new features and even new desktop environments and window managers. They just had a big release. Arco Linux just had a big release today as I'm recording this. Actually, they released version 20.11.9 and it's got all the standard desktop environments and window managers they've been doing, but they added a new one. Now they have a DWM edition of Arco Linux. So that may be something I want to check out. You know, check out their own customized version of DWM, even though I have my own config files for all these window managers. So I don't necessarily use Arco Linux, like their desktops, because I have my config files for every window manager I've ever used. So I just always pull down my own. But what I really like about Arco Linux is during the installation process, it asks you things to install, like what web browser you want to install, what office suite do you want to install, if you want to install one, you know, text editors and terminal emulators and things like that. The installer is really fantastic, and it's a, a very easy way to get up and running with an Arch-based system, but it's a very powerful installer because it lets you pick and choose exactly what you want to install. And depending on how comfortable you are with a command line installer, they actually have a version of Arco called Arco Linux D that's kind of a command line installer where you uh, basically install a bunch of shell scripts, you know, that take care of all the package installations and everything. You could edit those scripts, you know, depending on what packages you want installed and whatnot. It's just a fantastic distribution. The, the guy that's the main dev of Arco Linux, uh, Eric Dubois, he has a fantastic youtube channel let me pull up the browser again yeah here's eric's uh channel here it's just his name eric dubois and again he's got like two three thousand videos or some, some crazy number because he posts almost every day sometimes multiple videos a day and it's always about arco linux the latest that's going on uh, tutorials tips uh, er anything you want to know and i think that is one of the best things i've ever seen anybody do 
uh, with their Linux distribution is they have a video channel and they actually show you how to fix things and how to tweak things. And, and that's something that really no other Linux distribution has. And I think that's why Arco Linux is my top Linux distribution of 2020. Now, again, that is my personal top five. You guys probably have a different top five than me. And if you do, I want to hear about it. So post your top five Linux distributions of 2020 in the comments below. I, I would be fascinated to know what some of you guys were impressed with as far as releases in 2020, because all of us have probably tried different things, right? I, there's a ton of Linux distributions that I did not try in 2020. So I really can't judge those. And some of the ones I tried, you guys probably didn't try. So it's fascinating if we share what our experiences have been. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch, 5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Gregory, Caleb, Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this video about my top five Linux distributions of 2020 wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel is supported by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.